On this episode of Drinking Made Easy, I visit Philly. I drink some presidential beer, run like Rocky Balboa, drink. and shock Steve. Ah! It's Drinking Made Easy, Philadelphia. I'm Zane Lamprey. My job is to drink. I'm traveling the country with my buddies Mark Ryan and Steve McKenna as we explore the local drinking cultures, customs, and cocktails. Along the way, we'll soak in the local flavor in an effort to make drinking easy. Philadelphia is known as the city of brotherly love, and brother, do I love beer. So I headed to McGillan's Old Ale House, which opened in 1860. We're at McGillan's Old Ale House, but was it always called McGillan's Old Ale House? It was actually originally the Bell in Hand. Uh, oh. It was started by William McGillan, and he called it the Bell in Hand. The Bell in Hand? That's correct. You can see the original There's sign. There's a bell in someone's hand. It's the original sign from 1860. Oh, okay. It's the oldest continually run bar in Philly it has one of the best selections of local beer. And then during the whole prohibition, it's a little foggy as to what exactly happened. if it was a bar or not. No one's gonna get in trouble. The day, I know, I, I hope not. <laughs> we don't get fined or something. You never know these days. But uh, the day that the prohibition was enacted, Mama Gillen, she symbolically locked the front doors, said, I will not open these doors until prohibition ends. Okay. We conveniently have three other doors all around. <laughs> and so everybody used the side door. Is that right? uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. She hired the I best. I will never yeah. open these doors the door. again. That's it. There's a door right over there. Go ahead yeah. use that one. All of our local beers are within 90 miles. Okay. We have 29 beers on draft. Anybody that comes to Pennsylvania always should try one of Stout's beers. Carol Stout, who's the owner and the brewer, she's considered the first lady of the microbrew industry. They have, um, all their beers are uh, true German style. I mean, we do cover just about every style of beer uh, and try to cover every local brewery. All right, so look at this. This so, is a cloudy one. That is. One. That is the uh, Walt Whit from Philly Brewing. We have, in Philadelphia, we have two major breweries. Ooh, Philly nice. Brewing and Yards. Okay. And they both make fantastic beers. There are other smaller, you know, micro brew pubs and things like that, but these guys brew high quality beers uh, to many of the bars in Philadelphia. Um, I don't remember it. <laughs> Did I like it? I think I think I did. Loved it. The next one where I would go would be this one here, which this is now our hop beer. Our 1860 IPA. That was brewed by Stouts for our 150th anniversary. This yeah, one yeah. is from Sly Fox. It's their O'Reilly Stout. Slightly sweet, um, but they're from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Now Not you're this. moving into the, the Yards beers. This is kind of their signature beer. This is the local favorite, the hop. Are you a good chugger? No. It'd be really cool to see you chug that and then see if I could chug both of these in the time that it took you to chug that. You want to try we it? I could try that. Yeah, let's try it. How many ounces did I just drink? 24 ounces. I think I have as much the same amount of beer as you? No, you actually don't. This is 16 <laughs> and that's 12, which is why I'm a little nervous. Do you need a refill? Yeah, then I need something else. Okay. I have to chug okay. beers. Okay, ready? Yeah. Set. Go. Does that make me the new host of the show? You want it? <laughs> what do I have to do? Excuse me. Oh, right. That was probably the first beer I've chugged in 15 years. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. My next stop was City Tavern, where they serve colonial cocktails and some beer that was made from the recipes of our founding fathers. What's unique about it is that if you taste the beer, you can really see the difference between George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. And you can see it on the beer. Part of the whole experience to give the, the people a visit back to the past. So you researched the recipes for yards. We went to New York Public Library, got Washington's manuscript, and then start playing around with it. And then Hamilton, Which and is what this we one. do, correct, we sell the flights, so people can really see the statesman. It's very strong, but it's also very beautiful. I mean, it's a nice... Uh, yes, very floral. Can you yeah. hand me this sure. fine piece of literature here? <laughs> yeah. Walter, 
There's the companion to my TV show on PBS, and part of the thing is there's many, many drinks. And the holidays, you come here, people go crazy of the warm drinks, the cider drinks, and yeah. the, the wassels. So we have a tremendous amount of different beverages. I wrote a the, book, and yeah. mine, is, mine is about half as big as yeah, this. Well. Rather than taking a sip after a toast as we do, toasters drank an entire glass of their beverage of choice. Yep. Following a 13 toast as given at the second Independence Day celebration at the City Tavern here, yep. July 4th, 1778. Yep. You did all of these? All this, yeah, but I didn't drive. <laughs> I don't think you could have walked. <laughs> was ice available at the City Tavern? Ice was available how long into the year, nobody knew. They had a nice ice house in the back. They harvested the ice from the lakes. Initially, the tavern had, had a reputation for having ice. Okay. This is your this tavern is the... cooler. This is the biggest drink we have here. How many shots are in here? A shot of each. But you won't feel it. It calls up on you. Oh, that's unique. Yeah. What's in there? The City Tavern Cooler is made with peach brandy, Jamaican rum, whiskey, and fresh apple cider. It's completely a sleeper. It is a sleeper drink. We call it the leg opener. You call it the what, Walter? Leg opener. You figured out what it means. <laughs> no, I just wanted you to say it again. <laughs> what is Madeira? Yeah. It's fortified wine. Same as port, but Madeira port. is the island of Portugal, the island yeah. of Madeira. So it would be wine that has then alcohol, alcohol like to brandy added to it. Exactly. Something to like preserve that. it. Right. Okay. When the British aristocracy came over here and they would have a shot of Madeira, they would say, wow, how great is that? Yeah. Even the Quakers would drink Madeira. Thank, Thank you. you. George Washington would drink a quart, a quart of every Madeira day. Yes. every day. Yes, sir. And to the point where his teeth became yes. purple? Yes. His wooden teeth? Well, he didn't know wooden teeth. This is a myth. That's a myth? Yeah. Nobody can prove it. And you can see has sort of the, the, the tawny color that, yeah. that a port right. might have. So wait a second, I think we're supposed to kill it. If I say the United States of America, we, have, kill to, it. we right. have to finish it. Yeah. To the United States of America. Salud. Now you got 13 more like that coming. All right, to the protection yeah. of the rights of mankind. Take it down, yeah. <laughs> to the friendly European powers, the happy era of the independence of America, the commander in chief of the American forces, American arms by land and sea, the glorious Battle of Concord, the Battle of Trenton, the Battle of Saratoga, 26th of June, twice glorious. That looks like maybe that's two shots. Yeah. Now they're just looking for things to talk about, sure. to drink to. <laughs> maybe yeah. Battle of a Mammoth. A May the arts and sciences flourish in America. May the people continue free forever. May the union of the American states be perpetual. Yeah. This was a toast. This is yes. a cheers yes. that would last about 15 minutes. Yeah. After doing these 13 toasts, and you got out of control. Pe pe people would be a little bit Steve McKenna, as we, correct, we call correct, it. Correct. And then we, they would pull the, bar, the bars down. They would protect themselves. They would bar themselves yeah. in. The word bar comes from barring himself in, and that's where the gate came down. Got and it. then later on, the word bar came of it, and that's where the word bar came from. Coming up on Drinking Made Easy, the six six-pack challenge. Drinking Made Easy isn't just a TV show, it's also a drinking game. Yeah. So you can actually play along at home. You can drink along with us. For example, rule number one, if you're the first person to see Pleplius hiding somewhere in the show or out in the open, you can make someone else drink. Rule number two, if we mess up on our continuity, something's not quite the same from one shot to the next, you get to make someone drink. Rule number three, when we challenge each other, pick a side. If you lose, you drink. To have these rules explained, and for more drinking rules of the show, go to drinkingmadeeasy.com. Oh, play, play us. You have to drink. Yeah. We're in Philadelphia, where Steve and I are at Yards Brewing Company to try some of their presidential beer recipes. Everyone's been talking about this place. Steve. Yes. What are these beers named after? Our president. Who is president first? George Washington. Who do you think next? Uh, ben Franklin. This is George Washington's tavern order. This isn't just like, hey, let's come up with a, a good recipe. You're right. actually going back into history yes. and finding out old recipes. So what's, yep. what's the story with this one? Well, Washington, this is when he was a general. The officers were given a ration of basically like a firkin or a keg a week. Washington knew that, you know, just a pint a day really isn't enough. Yeah. So his thing, what he told him to do, drink half your keg in the beginning. So you would have like two or three pints, 
each. And you know, have, have a good party, maybe at night. Drink it down. I'm not sure if it was morning. I, I would say it would be like after you're done your. <laughs> I think you want your troops to get beer muscles and have a few pints and go out there and fight. There are letters showing that George Washington made sure that his troops had beer. Yes, they would give him a porter. They would drink that down half the firkin, and then they would add back warm water, make sure it was like blood warm, oh, okay. and molasses, and okay. steep it through some bran grains. Then cork it up and let it sit for two days. Yeast is still alive. If you're making it warm to get into the temperature that the yeast wants to Got ferment it. at. Got it. And it's going to eat the available sugars, which is in the molasses and anything it took from the grain. We made a what well, we felt that was going to be a, a porter with molasses okay. that was going to taste good. Now, what alcohol percentage <laughs> is this? That's seven. So if we were to drink three of these, that would be equal to a six-pack of light beer as far as alcohol content. Exactly. You get way more bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. So we have one more beer we're going to try here. It's named after Benjamin Franklin, which he was what president. Uh, third. This one is even more unique than adding honey and molasses. So this is called Poor Richard's Tavern Spruce. Ben Sorry, Franklin, you know. I guess, wrote a book on food, and one of the recipes was uh, a spruce beer. It's a, almost like an old ale to a mild ale, somewhere right in between there. You know, decent body, deep red color. It also has spruce twigs and sprigs put into it. This is spruce, and this was essentially be put in at what point in the process? Th this will go into the boil. Cheers to that. Here's to you, Tom. You had a wonderful brewery. Thank you. Have you altered any of these recipes a little bit to make them more you know, palatable for current consumption? Yeah, and the one that really sticks out is the General Washington Porter. Okay. Because it would have been so much molasses you would add back, almost half of the sugar would be molasses. And kind of what you're, you're almost fermenting a molasses wine which doesn't really taste great. Even with the Thomas Jefferson, that one had to be dumbed down a little bit because apparently the original recipe was almost 13%. Alcohol. Yeah. Wow. So we wanted to keep it sell yeah. sellable at 8%. Yeah, well, after, after four of those, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys need help? Yes, we do. <laughs> I learned a lot. You too, thank you. You learned something? Mm -hmm. Why don't you go learn that Ben Franklin wasn't president next time? Appreciate it. Awesome, cheers. Cheers. He wasn't a president? No, but he's on money, which is good. Money's good. Yeah. Our next stop was the Ugly American, which serves up a unique drink. But instead of using the front door, I wanted to give Steve a quick history lesson, so we snuck in through the secret entrance in the back. I'm an Ugly American? Yes. This is an old tunnel that they used to use back during the war. This would go from, on the harbor, go back quite some distance. From here to there? Yeah, it did. It went from here to there. And so when the British landed here, and they sent all the troops inland, the Americans filled these tunnels and then came through, popped out the tunnel, and then burned their boats, and then came up from behind them. So this place is called the Ugly American. We're here for two reasons. A, that's a funny name. <laughs> B, I brought an Ugly American. Three, you have a specialty drink here, and you have a piece of history downstairs. Yes. Let's start off with the signature drink. It's called the... Ugly Duckling. All right, so we need to start off with probably three. This is what? Okay. It's a local beer. It's... Yingling. This is the oldest well, this... brewery in the country. So you Yingling know more is than nearby. I, yeah. I come here with a wealth of information. I, yes. I... This is Jack Quinn's Rock and Rye. America's oldest cordial has been produced in Philly since 1884. It's made with rye whiskey infused with rock sugar and fresh fruit. This is called the Ugly Duckling. Yes. This is your signature drink here at the Ugly American. One, two, three, drop. What'd you think? Uh... Ah, you lost. Oh! You gotta put your head, your finger to the thing when you do this guy when someone does it. So now you gotta chuck a beer. What? Did, okay. I beat him. I Did beat, you beat him? Yes. All right, you gotta do a shot too. When someone burps, you gotta go like this, and the last person to go like that. Uh, really? Is that is that what you're bringing? I'm just trying to get you in the game. Are you trying to represent Philly with that? No, that sounds like air. Get, I, I want to do no, three shots. You have to do horrible. one too. No, that was horrible. Yeah. That's Come a good. On. You lost it. No, I had it up. You gotta I'm sorry. You gotta do them both at the same time. Did you get some in your face or just? No, I want to wear it home. You want to? 
All right, we'll do a shot. Steve. I hope, Cheers. I, I hope Thank you. I hope Thank you're Thank you. Thank you. Coming up on Drinking Made Easy, drink. Steve is in for a shot. Ah! While Steve and I were drinking down in Philly, Mark headed a few hours north to Yingling, the oldest brewery in the country. Your family's been making beer here since the 1800s, right? 1829, for 181 years now. 181 years of beer, that is amazing. Because, um, you know, Prohibition was in the 20s, so even before Prohibition, mm -hmm. you guys had almost 100 years of beer making under your belt. We're officially known as America's oldest brewery. Back in 1976, we were placed on the National Registry of Historic Places, so people come here to see America's oldest brewery. My great-great-great-grandfather started the company back in 1829. I am sixth generation, and my dad currently runs the company. He's fifth generation. So what did you guys do during Prohibition? My great-grandfather had the foresight to invest in other businesses, and he opened up a dairy across the street, so we made ice cream. The recipes that you guys made back then, you're still making today? Yeah, we've always been brewing craft-style beers. Our porter and our ale are brands that we've been brewing since 1829. If I went into a bar in Philly and just said, give me a lager, you're going to get, get a yingling. yingling. Yeah. That's right. Let's have a yingling. It's very good. It's full of color. This is know. an amber lager. It's got a nice um, amber color. It's a full-bodied beer. It's got a lot of flavor, but very drinkable. When you were brewing these 180 years ago, yes. How, what did you do at the, the aging process? How did you keep it cold? Because I know refrigeration was not right. available. The reason we chose this site was because it was built on a hill, and we dug caves in as natural refrigeration. Cheers. Tastes good, too. <laughs> We're here at the Blockley Poorhouse. There's a tradition here that this is a special shot. So we're going to bring in Patrick, and Patrick has a specialty shot. Can you explain what's going on, Patrick? All right, what's going to happen is I'm going to put my head down on the bar. Yeah. Nick's going to pour the finest liquor that we have in the house into my head, and he's going to do a shot out of yeah. it. Yeah. And what happened to your head? I had a football injury. Just craziness. You okay? Yeah, I'm perfect. This is the dent shot. All right, go ahead, uh, Patrick. Assume the position. Why is everybody yelling at me? One. I, where do I go? Two. You gotta look it up. Ready, ready, suck go, it. It's go. draining. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and that's the dent. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Steve and I went to Alpha American Tavern, an upscale cocktail joint where they serve up some original cocktails with local spirits. So we have some uniquely uh, Philadelphian cocktails that I'm gonna make for you. Correct. But I have no idea what I'm about to make. I'll be mixing up the sleight of hand made with root liquor, Guatemalan rum, grapefruit bitters, shaken over ice, and topped with ginger beer. First thing you do is you're gonna go grab one of those tins full of ice. So then you're gonna grab another one of those small tins from over there. All right, so we start with these, and then what's the first ingredient? Root first, but a half an ounce. It smells like root beer. It does. Root is a liqueur made in Pennsylvania. Okay. Specifically in Philadelphia. So what's the deal with this and root? beer that we know today as the soda. Around the turn of the century, they were making what later became known as root beer or sarsaparilla, okay. or birch beer, okay. as a liquor, with these with herbs those, and spices okay. and a lot of mulling spices that go into this. And so then as things progressed, right, they would add a sparkling soda and then give it to miners, oh. et cetera, et cetera, workers that were coming off. So the original root beer had alcohol in it. Had alcohol in it. What's next? It's a Copa, the Solera 23. Guatemalan rum. Give it an ounce and a half. So you're gonna take this, the Meyer lemon, just want like three or four drops. Okay. Of this is a grapefruit bitters that our friend Phoebe made. And bitters are a, a neutral spirit of very high proof. It's so like, like 170, one, 180. Got it, okay. And then you add your herbs, spices, or fruit, whatever. It. Mm -hmm. You basically age it. Okay. So now that neutral spirit is grabbing everything that's being infused into it. You're so gonna shake, shake it. them. Do I shake it with vigor, with purpose? Like it owes you money. Really? Yep. Now you take that ginger beer on the side and top it. 
Is this a Stevie straw? Yeah. Did I apologize yet? Now we have something made with... Blue coat gin. So this is an ounce and a half of the fabulous blue coat. Okay. And then Aperol. That is a dried cranberry. Vodka. Nose, nose. How many ounces? One, two. two. This is how it's made sour. Okay. Wait. It's sour. And yeah. cranberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> What else did you put in there? The iHeart Chase is made with gin, Aperol, house-infused cranberry vodka, cranberry juice, and house-made sour mix. This is called an iHeart Chase. Chase to the baseball player? Mm-hmm. Why? Second baseman for the Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah. Well, A lot of the Phillies come and drink here. That's really good. Does Chase drink these? And his wife does. The average cocktail is around... 10. 10 bucks? Sure. OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to put Steve's name up on the board eight times. And if someone goes, is that Steve McKenna from Drinking Made Easy, then you say, yes, it is, you get a drink. Steve just bought you a drink. Perfect. Can, is that cool? That's All great. Right. Nothing puts a cap on a day of drinking like sprinting up some steps. So we headed to the Philadelphia Museum of Art to run in the footsteps of Rocky Balboa. And so that's it, six six packs. Says I beat Steve. Nah, you gotta give him a little time or something. That's, I know you're gonna beat him. Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. Okay, okay. done. Okay, let's do it. It's time for the six six pack challenge. So here's the deal. In every episode of Drinking Made Easy, Steve and I will face off in a six six pack challenge. We'll bet six six-packs on the outcome, and Mark will bet on who he thinks will win. Whoever wins the challenge yeah! gets six six-packs of beer. Hey, yo, bleep, bleep us. Lamprey is going to give McKenna a five-second head start. One, two, three, four, five. Even full of beer, Lamprey zips right by a slothy, moving Steve McKenna and easily wins another six six-pack challenge. Genetically superior. Hey, you're a better drinker than I am. Thanks, bro. Thank you. All right, so come around the bar. <laughs> All right, so this is Steve McKenna. Okay, 50 bucks a person. What do you have? I got 60. I have 25, 26, 27. All right, wait, 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 wait. Okay, fine. But all you have to do, one little thing. Can you come in for a second? Oh you, the only thing is you have to wear this. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. Okay. I got it. Give me a drink. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. I don't want that. I don't want that power. 